Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at this relatively new filament from eSun and it's their matte PLA lineup. And so they sent me matte white and almond yellow to try out. And I really wanted flat black, but it turns out that's one of their more popular colors. And so they didn't have any in stock. If you guys are looking for this filament, go find your local eSun distributor and check out what they have online because by this time, they probably have matte black back in stock. I know everyone really loves printing and that nice flat matte black color. So let's take a look at the printing process and what it took me to get started and what it took me to get some decent results. I'll be sharing with you guys my experiences with this filament as well as my print settings. So let's get started. And so the very first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the packaging and you can see it's got the little window there with the color visible. So that's great for storage. And it's got a label showing you of course, what type of filament it is, what color and some general printing temperatures. Inside, no surprises here, you got your filament on a pretty standard spool. One issue that I've come across with other brands of matte PLA is that they tend to be brittle and eSun advertises that they do not have this issue with their filament. And so taking the raw filament in my hand and bending it back and forth and twisting it around, it appears that their advertising is true and this does not seem to be the case. It does not fracture easily. Now, layer adhesion is another issue with matte PLA. So we're gonna test that, but we have to do that post printing. Speaking of printing, I got started by loading the almond yellow filament into my CR10 smart printer and I loaded up a pretty standard PLA profile because on the box it says this stuff prints from 190 to 230 degrees Celsius. But immediately what I found was that on the first print, I got a print jam. And so I jacked up the temperature because I was finding that the filament was not flowing at those lower 210 degree temperatures. I jacked it up to about 220, 225 but I forgot to turn the part cooling fan on and these steep overhangs on the bottom of this little pot here uh, did not come out properly. They were too melted and they just did not cool properly. Then I turned the part cooling fan on and loaded up this uh, ornament here, this Christmas ornament and the super steep overhangs, even with the part cooling fan did not print quite properly. So it appears that this filament does have some issues with really, really steep overhangs. Uh, but to be fair, those were exceptionally steep. The rest of this print turned out not bad. There are a few inconsistencies in uh, some of those flat surfaces. And then I printed this part here and I was finding that I was still getting areas of inconsistencies and under extrusion, especially between uh, the top solid layer there and the perimeters, which was kind of uh, bothering me and it was hard for me to figure out why because all of my other PLA profiles did not have a problem with this on this printer. Numbers on the bottom that were uh, printed on the flat glass plate turned out really well. And then in terms of layer adhesion, uh, crushing this part in between my hand, it did separate and it did crack. So I did suspect that either the layer adhesion was poor for this filament, or perhaps I was having some other under extrusion issues uh, through the rest of this part. And you can actually see really some really bad separation there. Uh, between the bottom layer and the rest of the print. So then what I did was I moved on to printing a much more organic shape, which is this hand here. And I think it turned out really nice considering that I still didn't have the settings dialed in. However, on the inside of the hand, like on the palm and the inside of the fingers, I did still find some under extrusion issues. So the outside turned out nice, but the inside where there are uh, steeper transitions between uh, the Z layers, there just really wasn't enough filament to fill some of those gaps. And there was clearly some under extrusion issues going on here. And you can definitely see those gaps there on the palm, up into the fingers and definitely on the fingertips. So I needed to do some work with dialing this filament in. And I also wanted to change printers. So after this print, I switched it up and I moved the filament from the CR10 Smart to my ET5X printer with a direct drive extruder. On the new machine, I went back to printing these bar shaped pieces, the ones that you just saw with the numbers on the bottom. And I was finding that the small details like those numbers were not sticking to the bed on the first layer properly. And so another nuance with this type of filament seems to be that the bed temperature needs to be a little bit hotter than standard. With my standard PLA, even the eSun PLA Plus, I run the bed pretty cool at about 50 degrees Celsius, but you might want to bump that up to 55 or 60 with this. And then you'll have that nice first layer adhesion on the print bed. Despite most layers going down fine, I did notice that I was still getting that under extrusion on the top solid infill. And you can see those gaps there around the holes in this clip here. 
So it wasn't a problem with the printer, it seems to be a problem with perhaps the filament. This prompted me to switch back filaments to a regular PLA and do a sanity check print. And you can see that in orange here. And this print with the same settings, otherwise other than temperature, turned out great. There's only one very tiny area there of under extrusion, but the rest of it was perfect. So I figured, like I said, that it had to be something to do with the filament. And that then prompted me to print a series of test prints where I was changing small settings like the top solid layer uh, infill percentage. I was changing the overlap between the uh, perimeters and the infill, all sorts of settings here where I was trying to get rid of those gaps and the under extrusion that I was experiencing, especially on the top of the part. And I did make some small improvements incrementally through each of these pieces. And at the end, I did get rid of almost all of it However, it still was bothering me that I was doing that for this particular filament, but not the rest of my filament. And I'm a little embarrassed that it took me as long as it did to finally pull out a set of calipers and measure the filament. So measuring the diameter of this, what should be 1.75 millimeter filament, I was finding that it was coming in around 1.71, 1.72, and I think I found even as low as 1.7 in a few places on this particular spool. So there was definitely an issue here with the quality control of this filament in terms of its diameter. Measuring a different brand of filament, I was getting a pretty consistent uh, 1.75 right along the entire range of the filament, even as high as 1.76. So it was the opposite end. I was getting more filament coming out of the nozzle on other brands of filament, whereas the eSun Matte, uh, if this would definitely explain the under extrusion issues that I was having because the filament was a smaller diameter. Armed with this new knowledge, I put together a custom profile in Prusa Slicer for the eSun matte filament. And the main setting that I changed was the extrusion multiplier setting, which I bumped up a few percent. And this made a world of a difference. All of the remaining prints that I printed turned out a lot better, and I didn't have that under extrusion issue. However, one issue that I did still seem to have on most of the prints not all, but most, which again was confusing to me because you would expect consistency. Uh, but I did find on the outer perimeters, in some prints like this one here, you'll see a little bit of waviness. And this was something I was not able to resolve. I tried changing so many settings, uh, whether it's the temperature, or the part cooling fan, the percentage that I changed on the extrusion multiplier, etc., etc. And it was not something that I fi could figure out on how to consistently resolve. Now you'll see in this print here, these were the same settings as the previous print and the walls turned out just fine. They were acceptably smooth. So I'm not really sure what it was, uh, but it just goes to show that this filament, although it is a nice matte color, it does seem to be a little trickier to print and there are definitely some nuances when printing with matte materials. Since we keep talking about settings, let's take a look at the settings that I settled on. So 0.25 millimeters were the layer height of all the prints in this video. The solid layers, both in the horizontal and vertical direction, so the top and side shells were three layers thick. Infill, nothing crazy going on here, pretty much everything standard. I left it at a 15% triangular infill pattern. Uh, speeds, 60 millimeters per second was sort of the base speed that I set for the perimeters. My external perimeters are 75% of that. This is slower, significantly slower than what I use on most of my other PLAs. So that is another setting that I did adjust for the matte PLA was I slowed things down a little bit. The first layer speed at 25 millimeters per second. Normally I'll have that perimeter setting up at the top set to about 80 millimeters per second for the rest of my regular PLA. In terms of the extrusion width, first layer was 135% and the top solid infill was pretty much just the nozzle diameter of 0.4 millimeters. I did bump up the infill and perimeter overlap, and this was one of the settings that I also had to adjust to account for some of that under extrusion that I was seeing between the infill and the perimeters. Extrusion multiplier, I increased 7% to account for the smaller diameter filament. First layer goes down at 230 degrees Celsius. All other layers were printed at 225, and the heated bed was at 55 degrees, which I had mentioned earlier in this video. Now the part cooling fan is something that I toggle on and off. So if it's a large print with no steep overhangs, I can leave that fan always on option off. 
but if it is a part that has steep overhangs regardless of its size I'll always keep the part cooling fan on. Back to looking at some prints, I do think that I achieved some really great results with this filament but looking at it again while recording the audio for this YouTube video I'm noticing a few other things that ideally I should have changed and so you'll see these little zits or uh, stringing on the inside of these parts and looking at it again, I'm thinking that it could be a function of the higher print temperatures. And so perhaps it would benefit uh, these prints if I had upped the retraction settings a little bit for this particular filament. So that's something I might go back and play with, uh, but it was on the inside of the print, so I didn't fuss about it too much. The rest of these parts came out exceptionally well, uh, where most of them, again, were very consistent at this point, especially after increasing the extrusion multiplier. I think a lot of them look really nice. Obviously you're buying this filament for the matte color. It is exceptionally flat. So I was happy with that, but I did still see some gaps in some of my prints and you'll see that in the upcoming part here where in the front of this pot, there are some areas where there are gaps and voids. And my theory is that potentially the filament is dipping below that minimum 1.71, 1.7 millimeter dimension that I measured earlier in some spots. I just wasn't able to measure those. I've never had any quality issues with any other eSun products that I've used in the past, so I'm going to chalk this up as an anomaly. Perhaps I just got a bad batch of filament, I'm not sure, time will tell as more people begin to use this filament. Just to absolutely rule out the possibility that it could be a printer issue versus the product issue here, I switched over to the matte white filament on the Anet A8 Plus machine that I have and I was still seeing the same sort of thing. And with the matte white filament, there were some inconsistencies, not so much with under extrusion, but in terms of the smoothness of the walls. Compared to other PLAs that I use, I can get those bang on, and we'll see that in some of the other sample prints that I'll present to you in a moment. Uh, but with this matte white filament, the walls were just a little bit bumpy, and this again was not something that I could figure out and resolve. Looking at some final test prints here, I want to share a few other observations with you. And so when it comes to reproducing small and tight details, like these little ribs on this pot here, the filament performs exceptionally well. I don't see any sort of bleed in those uh, little tiny details or features. The very thin fins on this print here came out really well. They are again a little inconsistent in terms of the walls, but in terms of layer adhesion, I can flex them quite a bit before they start to feel like they're going to crack. So once I resolve that under extrusion issue by bumping up the extrusion multiplier, you'll see that the layer adhesion is acceptable and fine. And it actually matches what I would expect from regular PLA. But again, there's inconsistencies uh, along the walls. This is the part that I showed you earlier. So again, some small gaps can be found in some areas of the print which isn't ideal, but it doesn't show up on all the prints. Here's a similar part with the matte filament, and it's uh, less apparent in this piece here, but if you look close enough, there's still some small gaps. Again, this is probably due to the filament diameter varying across the spool. So Isan, if you're watching this video, uh, be sure to check out your quality control on your matte PLA line. Comparing the eSun matte PLA parts to the same parts printed in regular PLA, you can certainly see a difference between the sheen. And so it might not necessarily be a fair comparison between a black and white part like this, but on the black part, you can definitely see more reflections. And so when it comes to the matte aspect of this filament, uh, it's really it performs really well. And compared to some of the most matte filaments that I've tested in the past, it's right up there and you'll definitely be happy with the sheen and the color. Now, moving on to a different comparison here with white and PLA Plus in gray. So this PLA Plus is also from eSun. And again, you can see the difference in reflection. We're getting a little bit closer in terms of a fair comparison. Unfortunately, I didn't have a uh, PLA plus or regular PLA in white to compare the two to be sort of an apples to apples comparison um, Definitely I didn't have a color that came close to the almond yellow that seems to be very specific to the eSun matte filament uh, But gray versus white it's a little more fair and you can still see that the matte white filament looks a lot flatter My final thoughts on this product is that it has a lot of potential 
And I say that because the color is exceptional, the matte finish is exceptional, um, but I'm hoping that the experience I had with the inconsistencies of the filament diameter is not an indication of the experience that you will have if you go to purchase this. And I'm really hoping that my experience is an anomaly here and perhaps I just got a bad batch of filament from eSun. Again, I've used tons of their products in the past and I've never had a bad experience with any of their other PLAs. You saw those other parts in the eSun PLA Plus and they came out really smooth and consistent. In terms of the mechanical properties of this filament, I think you'll find that the eSun matte filament will outperform other matte filaments on the market. And I say that because I've tried a whole bunch of them and one very common issue amongst them, as I mentioned earlier in the video, is the problems with layer adhesion as well as the brittleness of the parts. And so whatever these companies are doing in terms of additives or chemical changes to the PLA formula to achieve a matte finish, oftentimes it has negative effects on the mechanical properties. Esun seems to have avoided those issues on their product here, and the mechanical properties seem to be very sound. The only compensation I received from Esun for the making of this video was to receive these two free rolls of filament. And so I'm hoping that the information that I provided to you guys seems reliable and trustworthy because the compensation was rather insignificant. And I just make these videos to keep you guys informed of some great products that are coming out onto the market and stuff that you guys can use to make your projects even better. So that's it for this video and I hope you guys found it useful. Uh, especially the print settings that I shared with you guys to get you guys up and running faster than it took me uh, because I had to do a little bit of experimenting with this and there was a little bit of wasted filament involved in the beginning. But the good news here is that that's not really a big deal because this filament does have a lower density than regular PLA. And as we all know, uh, filament is sold by the kilogram. And so for the same kilogram, you'll get more meters of filament, which means that you can afford to uh, waste a little bit if you are trying to dial in the settings. Uh, but if you do happen to nail the settings with the same ones that I shared with you guys, then you can get up and running in printing and you'll get a lot of value for a single kilogram of filament. And eSun is a great brand. It's been around for a long time. I use a lot of their products, uh, whether it's their resins or their FDM uh, filament. Their PLA Plus has been a staple of mine for a long time now. So definitely go check them out online if you haven't already used their material. Uh, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and uh, hopefully you guys like this video. See you next time.